All right, today I'm gonna to review the deep history of ourselves. The four billion year story of how we got conscious brains by Joseph Ledoux. So Joseph Ledoux, he's a professor at, I think, NYU, and he's the chair of a bunch of things. He's very distinguished for a professor, and he spent his whole career on various like brain-related things, a uh, bunch of subtopics, but he has a broad background in the brain and how it works and how it functions and the research into that. So he's a great person to write a book like this. And this book is trying to tell the story of how brains evolved from simple cellular organisms all the way up to fully functioning human brains with consciousness and reasoning abilities. And he's trying to cover everything in between and, and how we got to where we are now. Really interesting premise. I was really excited to read this book. Uh, but when I started reading the book, like 50 to 100 pages in, I started to kind of get annoyed. And I kind of felt like the book was a bit misleading because I've read a lot of books that are histories of things like Bill Bryson's book, A Short History of Nearly Everything, uh, the book uh, Origin Story, which is similar to A Short History of Nearly Everything. Then there's books like Sapien, uh, The Emperor of All Maladies, The Gene. All of these books kind of tell a history of sorts. Um, but most of them, like the common theme is that they're all biased towards the recent history, especially books like A Short History of Nearly Everything or Sapiens. Because of if you look back through history, if you start at the beginning and you kind of measure time linearly, all the information we have happens at the end of the at the end of time when humans arrived and when here we're doing stuff. And in any time you're telling a history of like a complex system that evolves and uh, progresses over time, the end is going to be where everything interesting really happens. Uh, you're going to like just skim over the beginning part and tell a few things. And then at the end, everything that's super interesting happens. It's very similar to like how life evolved. You know, the Earth's like the Earth is four and a half billion years old, but we didn't get past simple cellular micro microbes until like I think like 600 million years ago. And then we got dinosaurs like a few hundred million, like 400 million years ago. Or I think no, I think that's land based uh, life forms. That was uh, 400 million years ago. So you can see that if you're going to tell the story of how life started and everything, you're going to skim through the beginning until you get to like when all the interesting creatures are arrived. And that's how most of these histories go. They skim through the beginning because not much happens. And it takes a huge amount of time. And then at the end, when everything interesting happens, they spend the bulk of the book explaining that story. And so I figured that's how this book would be written. I mean, he says that he's going to take the story from simple cellular organisms all the way to the brain, but you would expect the majority of that time would be talking about types of brains, at least that level of complexity. But what happens is that he spends like 150 pages out of 380 pages. So not half, but maybe less, more than a third, but less than half. It's kind of in that range of the book, just talking about like cellular organisms and how like the first neurons evolved and then like simple multicellular organisms and how they functioned, like really simple, like uh, flatworms and things like that. And when he gets past that, the book gets really good when he starts talking about brains, but nothing that he talks about beforehand really carries over in the, once he gets to brains. Cause once you're done talking about cells and you start talking about how brains operate, everything that happens is like billions of neurons working together. So you just skim over the neurons and you just tell the story of how the different brain modules work and how they communicate and what's going on there. And it was really frustrating that he spent so much time talking about the simple cellular stuff because I don't think anyone's really looking to hear that story told in that much detail. If you read the, the title of the book, the subtitle, you're probably interested in the story of the brain, like how brains and intelligence and animals evolved. But the, the beginning there, it's just, it feels so disconnected from the rest that it was kind of a drag to have to read that. And I felt kind of bored and kind of over it uh, while it was going on. But then when he gets to the brain, the book gets so interesting so fast that it's kind of, it's just annoying that he didn't spend more time on the brain part and less time on just the cellular stuff. 
But when you get into the book, it does get really good. When he's talking about the brain, it's super interesting. He talks about uh, how the brain evolved and how uh, it evolved differently in different lines. For instance, birds have some pretty complex reasoning abilities. They can solve some pretty complicated problems. And so can mammals like primates and humans, of course. But uh, the two lineages, like... uh, they separated before either of those features evolved in any uh, line. So birds and, and mammals split before either birds or mammals had those complex brains. But they both ended up evolving complex brains in their own ways. So telling that story and giving a lot of color and nuance to all these differences was really interesting. And then talking about uh, what we can think about consciousness or in like dogs and cats like animals of that sort that seem to have emotions, like the way they act. They have behaviors that we attribute to emotions, but we actually don't have that much information that they're consciously experiencing these emotions. And so he talks, he spends a lot of time trying to like cut through the uh, misunderstandings in that field and really give a scientific view of what's going on. And that whole part of the book was really great. Uh, It's maybe 175 pages of the book out of a 380-page book. And I'm disappointed that that good part of the book wasn't the whole book. And uh, so the beginning, 150 pages of the slow cellular stuff. And then 175 pages of good stuff. Then right at the end, the book makes another weird change. So up until the very end of the book, everything's like what happened and how it worked. It's just showing you like uh, the evolutionary steps that things took and then what happened. It's very straightforward and it's very just informative. It feels like you're in school. Like the teacher just tells you this is the information. It's very easy to follow along and just like catalog what you're listening to. But at the end of the book, he starts talking about his own theory about how the brain works and it kind of turns into an argumentative essay because he starts comparing his view versus other people's views And he's like going through this argument about why he's right. And it feels like just, it feels odd and out of place because the end, the conclusion of a book should kind of summarize everything and bring it together and and tie a nice bow on the whole narrative that the book provided. And what he does is he kind of just makes a weird left turn. And then he starts like arguing about the, the different, uh, like theories of how the brain works at a high level. And, I mean, it wasn't off topic, it was relevant, but it just seems weird because the whole structure of the book changes in those sections because the way you write a simple narrative or a story is very different than the way you write an argumentative essay. Uh, so that was that was weird. And if it was just, if that was the only weird thing, I might not even mention it. But when you add the argumentative stuff that I found odd and like the the massive overweight in the simple cellular life form stuff it really seems like the author missed an opportunity to write a truly great book because the middle of the book when he's talking about what you expect him to talk about is really good the book is excellent in that part of the book but the rest of the book is not that great so it's it's really frustrating because the author clearly has a mastery of the subject matter he could have written the book that I wanted him to write, which is just the middle chunk of the book expanded into a full length book. But because he makes it, he goes on these weird tangents or he just seems like he's off topic or talking too long about certain subjects. It just seems like he missed a big opportunity. And that it was, how do I want to say it? It was really apparent to me while I was reading this book that I was constantly being I was constantly frustrated that he wasn't talking about what I wanted him to talk about. And I feel like what I expected him to talk about, what I wanted him to talk about, was exactly what you would expect given the uh, the subtitle of the book. The Four Billion Story of How We Got Conscious Brains. It's like, yeah, you know it's a long story, but if you're going to be talking about conscious brains, most of the book should be about brains. And it, most a lot of it is about other stuff or just about... Uh, cellular stuff where it's making weird arguments between modern theories of the brain. And uh, it just, it seems like the book could have been an A plus book. It could have been like one of my favorite science books that I've read this year. But 
as it is, I mean, I, I'll rec- I recommend it. I think people should read it if you're interested in the brain. It's pretty good because the middle of the book is really good. And the middle of the book makes the whole book worth it. But the beginning of the book and the end of the book are... The quality drops off enough that it kind of brings down the overall quality of the book pretty significantly for me. I think maybe I'll give it like a B minus or a C plus. But it feels. But if he would have just stayed on topic and and stuck to what he talks about in the middle of the book, the book could have been an A plus. It could have been so great. And so it's really weird and frustrating that it's not that. Another thing I should mention is that you'll definitely want to pick up the physical book. There's a lot of diagrams and a lot of pictures in this book. And if you're not reading the uh, physical book, you're going to miss out on a lot of that stuff. So there's an example of one picture. There's a bunch in here. I, uh, a few pages later, some more. I didn't mark them, and I don't want to sit here and uh, just find them all. But uh, trust me when I say you're going to want the book or at a minimum, the uh, ebook version. I'm sure the ebook has the same diagrams, but I had the audiobook and the physical book. And while the audiobook was great to listen to, when I went back and looked at the same content in the book and you started looking at all the pictures, I, I feel like I missed out on a lot of stuff by, by listening to the audiobook. I went, I went back and I looked at everything and uh, absorbed what was in the physical book, but You'll definitely want the physical book. Uh, just trust me on that. So I hope you guys like this video. I hope you like the review. Uh, I've got more reviews coming soon. I know I just took a few weeks off and uh, went on vacation and I haven't got a video out in a while, but I've been reading a lot of stuff. So I've got a lot more videos to get to in the near future. So like, subscribe, and I hope to see you guys in the next one.